Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action. Well, hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. It is a glorious day here in sunny, sunny Las Vegas. Yes, I'm back in Las Vegas. So it's a glorious day in sunny, sunny Las Vegas. So I'm hoping that you are having a wonderful Sunday. I hope your Sunday is glorious. And remember to be grateful. Gratitude is an attitude that can literally change your life. So today, guys, I'm talking about God doesn't test us. And, you know, this came up as a conversation. I was having a conversation with somebody recently. And, and this, this is something that had come up. And as you know, guys, you can actually find me at the laws of attraction in action.com and the laws of attraction in action.com right here on Facebook, the group. The, the, what I'm about is about the power of choice. I'm about us using, hey, Val, I'm about us using the power of choice the power of the universal laws, the spiritual laws, the laws that have been given to us from God for us so that we can create the lives that we want to live. So I got notes today, guys. I got notes. I'm not flying solo today. I got notes because I wanted to be very concise in how I put this message across because many people feel that they are tested by God. I, on the other hand, have a different opinion about that. So anyway, God doesn't test us. Um, my mother actually has a saying, and she would always say this. I remember my mom saying this as a child, you know, um, when things were going radically wrong, that this is my cross and my trial. And the cross being something that you have to bear or something that you have to carry or something that you have to make your way through. Okay. And the trial, of course, you know, could be the legal thing, you know, to determine whether you are guilty or innocent innocent. However, in this instance, we're speaking of trial as an attempt or an effort to do something or to achieve a goal. So in essence, we are talking about taking some sort of experimental action that's going to take you through whatever you're going through so that you can get um, the desired result that you want. My cross and my trial. God doesn't test us. And this is something that I truly believe with every fiber of my being. God doesn't test us. It's not only something I believe, it's something that I know. But I know for me. And as I always say, and I will say this, you know, do your own due diligence. Part of life is doing your own due diligence with the information that is supplied to you. So God doesn't test us, yet we feel that when we're going through our trials and our tribulations, which incidentally, guys, as it pains me to say this, have, has all, everything has come about as a result of the choices that we have made. And when things don't turn out the way that we want or it goes south, we feel that we are being tested by God. You see, it doesn't matter whether you make your choices consciously or unconsciously, which many of us do. We don't even realize that. It's still a choice. And as a result of that choice, you are now in this moment living living the manifestation, the reality of that choice. And so as we go through our trials and tribulations, what we say is that God is testing us. And again, I'm here to tell you, God isn't testing us. There is no test. In reality, it's just a situation. You see, life is all about how you perceive it and then what you do with that perception. So that being said, let me, let me just... Uh, talk on that for a hot second. God doesn't test you. Your life is manifested by the words that you speak. Matthew 12 verse 37 states it clearly, says it clearly. For by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. God doesn't need to test you. God doesn't need to test you and, and, and for you to answer for anything, you are your judge and jury, but that's a whole nother topic by itself. You justify and you condemn yourself. So once again, God isn't testing you. There is no test. There is only choice. Choices that you have made with your spoken word, your thoughts and your deeds. As I just said, Matthew 12, verse 37 says, 
by your words, you will justify yourself. And by your words, you will condemn yourself. Your words are the actions that you take, the deeds that you take. Again, God isn't testing you. Your tribulations, your tribulations and the dictionary definition of tribulations is uh, suffering, um, distress, uh, troubles, you know, that, that sort of thing. So your tribulations, everything that you're going through, whether, guys, you want to hear this or not, and it's not condoning anything that's happening to you. This is true. The tribulations, what you're experiencing now are self-made your words are so powerful and people just don't even understand. If people knew how powerful their words were, they would do something different. They would do something totally and utterly different. So your tribulations and you are self-made by the words that you're speaking. The beliefs that you have, which all equate to the choices that you make. In fact, tribulations for me, as I see it, are a signal they're a signal from within, within you, supplying you with the answers to overcome the trials that you are going through. Once again, God doesn't test us. There is absolutely no test. There is no test. When we have prayed our last prayer, and we've prayed, we've done everything that we can do in the form of prayer, everything that we know to do. And our prayer has been answered in part. And the other part has been left unanswered. And as a result, we are thrown back into turmoil or thrown back into tribulation. We wind up saying, God is testing us. Once again, God isn't testing you. God is speaking to you through the very situation that we are going through, God is speaking to us. You see, God is supplying us with answers and options upon which we must make a choice. God doesn't choose for you. And for those of you who listen to me or follow me, you know, you know I'm hot on that. God doesn't choose for you. God will show you and give you options to choose from, but you have to make the choice. If we've had our heart's desire, and many people will say they haven't experienced this, but many people have had their heart's desire and the manifestations that they have wanted, they have done the work, they've done the work, they've prayed, they've done their visioning. They have, they have actually prayed from the end saying thank you for things that they haven't received yet, but they're saying thank you because they feel it, they believe it, they've stepped into it. So you see, when, when we have prayed our last prayer, when we have prayed our last prayer and our heart's desire has been manifested and the blessings that we have wanted are pouring down upon us, they're raining down upon us and everything is right in the world. And we're like, yeah, you know, we're doing the Tootsie Roll, we're doing the Cabbage Patch. I can't remember how to do the Cabbage Patch. I know that was an ugly doll. You know, we're doing, we're, I mean, we're doing the happy dance. And then the bottom falls out of our world. And everything is turned upside down. And it appears that we are thrown into turmoil or it appears that we're thrown into chaos and tribulation. We will say that God is testing us. Once again, guys, God isn't testing you. You see, in this instance, when you have everything that you want and life is good, it's just going. I mean, it's just, you're just cruising. You're just cruising. When in reality, you're kind of sitting there, but you feel like you're cruising. God isn't testing you when it's gone upside down. You have just been put on notice that life, and this is a gift that you are given. The life that we have, it's always moving forward. There's always forward momentum. We have been put on notice, divine notice, that we need to move and do something else. We need to do something new. You see, this gift of life that you have is always moving forward. We are never standing still. You see, he who has no momentum, no momentum, forward momentum in his life, ceases, ceases to exist. So God isn't testing you when everything is going right and then the bottom falls out of your world and it's turned upside down. There is no test. God isn't testing you. You see, as I said, there is only choice. And when you are looking at your world from upside down, like, I don't know how this happened. You have been put on divine notice that it's time to manifest the next 
desire of your heart. It's time to choose something different. It's time to move on with your life. It's time to build upon that which you have already established. God isn't testing you. God isn't testing you. That is divine notice. God's giving you clear instruction. You need to do something else. Build upon what has already happened. You know, we, we have this thing where we say that, you know, we're over people, places and things, you know, and you've done the internal work. You may have gone to a therapist. You may have gone to a coach. I mean, you've done the internal work. You've done the personal growth and the situations and the things that have created limiting beliefs in your life, that have created obstacles in your life, that have created tribulations and drama and all this sort of thing, you know, yada, 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 you've overcome. Woohoo! Yeah, you did it. And yet, here this situation comes out of the blue. And you think to yourself, oh my God, here comes those feelings of inadequacy, those feelings of lack, those feelings of, you know, worthlessness and those, those, those feelings of I can't and yada, yada, yada. Here these feelings come back again and you're like, I did this work. I did this work. Why is this and you fill in the blank coming back at me again? Why is God testing me? Why is God testing me? And we say that God is testing us to make sure that we're over whatever it is. No, there's that. I don't believe that either. I don't believe that either. I don't believe that of God. Who has the time? Do you have the, I don't, I, I, I don't believe that. So whatever this thing is that you feel that you have overcome, God isn't testing you. God is showing you something about yourself. God is showing you your majesty. God is showing you your strength. God is showing you the character that you possess. And God is showing you how far you have come. You see, you get to choose if you look at it as God testing you. But if you change your, your viewfinder lens, if you change your view ever so slightly, you will see that God is showing you something about yourself. And God is showing you that you have the power to overcome any tribulation any trial that you have set for yourself. God's always showing us something. See, God doesn't put us on trial. It's not about guilt or innocence. You do that. As I, as I said, with Matthew, uh, Matthew 12, verse 27, you justify yourself by your spoken word. You condemn yourself by your spoken word. God has no need to do that. We do that to ourselves. So God isn't testing you nor has God put you on trial. And once again, the trial I am speaking of isn't about ascertaining your, your, your guilt or innocence about something that you did. You did it. There ain't no guilt or innocence there. You did it. It's about you solid, making a choice and solidifying the desired outcome. This is the trial that I'm speaking of. You know, when they have, they have something like, let me just mark this page, mark where I'm at, guys. They have this thing, you know, like um, uh, 409, the cleaner. It's a household cleaner for those over the world who don't know what 409 in. Four, 409 is, it's a household cleaner. You know, you spray it and you clean, right? 409, they were under trial to do this. It took them 409 times to figure out through the power of choice, the power of elimination, the power of knowing where it is they wanted to go next. It took them 409 times to get it right, to get it just where they wanted. And you think the company stopped there? They went on to do other things. And so it is with us. God simply lights the pathway. And it's multiple pathways God gives us because as I'm a true believer and I always see that, say this, all roads lead to home. All roads lead to home. I don't care who you are, what you do, all roads lead to home. So um, there are multiple pathways God shows us and God's, God also shows us multiple doors upon which we can, we can walk down the pathway, we can open the door. God shows us all of these multiple things. And God supports us in manifesting what we want for our lives. And hear me clearly. 
hear me clearly. If there's nothing that you 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 take away from this, if there is absolutely nothing that you take away from this, God does not make choices for you. You make choices for you. God shows you doors, windows, opportunities, whatever makes you feel comfortable here. God or whomever your chosen deity is, whomever your chosen God is, wherever your chosen God resides, shows you people, places and things, situations, pathways for you to make a choice from. God doesn't make a choice for you. God doesn't make a choice for you. It's important that you know God's role in your life and your role in God's life. It's important that you know this. And again, this is something that I've spoken about in depth. God simply shows you multiple things from you to choose from. You get to choose. Your life is all about you and your choices. So what I would say, what I would say to you is this. What I would say to you is this in closing, because I'm getting ready to get off here, right? As a choice expert, I know that no choice is wrong. And I do know that. Now, I've been there and I'm sure you've been there, but I know I've been there, so I'll speak for me. I've been there. It doesn't always feel like the choice that I made isn't wrong, especially when the results of the choice don't actually bear the fruit or, or manifest what I want. It doesn't feel like the choice is wrong. Excuse me, it feels like the choice is wrong. But the reality is no choice is wrong because once you've made a choice, you can never go back and change it. The only thing you can do is make another choice in the hope that you, you move in the direction that you want or you manifest the things that you want. So no choice is ever wrong. Absolutely no choice is, cho choice is wrong. Actually, and no choice is right, to be honest with you. It's just a choice. You see, it's all about what you choose to consciously do after a choice has been made and that which you have put out there. The universal source known to me as God the creator has sent back to you in a form that you've wanted, i.e. it's been made manifest, it's been made tangible. It's what are you going to do after that? See, what you consciously choose to do and how you choose to use any experience in your life is the thing that is going to support you in getting what you want. It might sound ironic, but it's really very, very, very true. There is only choice in your life. Absolutely only choice. God isn't testing you guys. God isn't testing you. You can test yourself if that's something that you want to do. You can set up a premise where you, where you test yourself. So attractioners, that's the law of attractioners. Everybody out there, there is no test. There is simply you making choices and how you choose to make a choice on another choice and how you choose to view it. There is only the manifest manifestation of your choice and then the emotional the emotional outpouring and attachment that you make, make as a result of the choice that you've made, i.e. how you respond to a choice. And let me just say this. Many people will respond to a choice and they'll respond to a choice and they'll respond to it emotionally. And one of the things that I caution, I caution my clients, I caution my family, I caution my friends, and of course, yours truly, myself, I caution myself. Don't make a choice based on how you are feeling today. Because the weather report today will be different tomorrow. Your emotional weather report tomorrow will be different than it was today. The thing that ticked you off to no end, the thing that made you kiss your back teeth, the thing that, you know, the thing that just sent you into overdrive today is the thing that you'll talk about tomorrow and you'll be laughing so hard 
that you cry or the thing that you talk about five years from now and you're talking about, I don't even know why I let that bother me. That was so stupid. What a waste of energy. But yet still, if we make a choice, a serious choice, an impassioned choice, a choice filled with belief and passion because this is where you are now, today, you need to understand that that's going to manifest for you because as it said, your word does not return to you void. It will return back to you from whence it has gone to. And with it, it carries in a tangible form the thing that you have spoken into existence. We are so powerful, guys. We don't even give ourselves enough credit. The power is amazing. We don't even give ourselves enough credit. So that being said, guys, God isn't testing you. As I said, you, you can do that yourself if you want to. There is no test. There is simply your choice and how you choose to attract and uh, the, the manifestations that you want in your life via the choices you make. God is there for you. And this is saying that uh, I don't know. I, I was actually trying to research where this saying goes. And as far as I got, it was I got the, the kind of thing that it was Confucia. And I, I couldn't actually um, verify this. So anyway, this is saying wherever I go, there I am. And ironically, in Psalms, it says this. And that's Psalms 139 verse 8. It says, if I ascend up into the heavens, thou, God, art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. God is there for you because God is everywhere that you are. God doesn't test us. God just supports us in the things that we say that we want. So guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. You can check me out on the laws of attraction in action, uh, com, And of course, the laws of attraction in action, the group. Guys, as I started out saying earlier, as I started out saying earlier, it's so important to do your own due diligence about your life. It's so important to do your own to your, your own due diligence. None of us are the same, much like snowflakes, much like um, raindrops. Thanks, Phil. Much like raindrops. Everyone's unique. Even grains of sand. Everyone's unique. If you, if you, if you look at a drop, of, a drop of water, each drop is different. You are unique. So anything that you, you hear, anything that you read, it needs to be applied to you in that unique way of who you are. That's how it needs to be applied. If you try to apply it verbatim, if you try to apply it as you've heard it, it becomes inflexible and one of you will break. Whatever you hear needs to be made flexible to you. This is why you're able to cut bits off that don't serve you. You'll be able to add bits, bits that serve you, bits that make you you, bits that make you quintessentially or essentially you. You'll be able to create a tapestry that is for you. There's so much out there. There's so much out there. And everything out there has been put out there because somebody has had a need so guys, as you move through life, as you want to, I don't know, improve your life, as you want to grow spiritually, whether it's spiritually, financially, or, or whatever it is that you, within a relationship, understand that the work that you do is internal. And also understand that the things that you read, the things that you hear, the things that you, you see on TV, the things that people say to you, you know, the things that you hear at the people talking about behind you in the grocery store, all of these things are presented so that you can take just like a box of chocolates. It, okay, just like a box of chocolates. And then, and then I'm going to get off of here. Just like a box of chocolates, you get to choose. Now, guys, you have a, a box of, um, uh, 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 I used to eat Ethel M's lemon cream. I could and uh, I could eat my weight in there, and girl, I'm carrying it. I could. I just love those. Actually, I had to mentally cut myself off from that because 
I would, I, I'm, I could just eat pounds of that. Even if you have, even if you have a box of chocolates and they're all the same, you, ironically, you still look at the box and you still say, hmm, which one should I take? They're all the same. They're all the same. And you look at it and you're like, hmm, I'll take that one. They're all the same thing. So what I'm saying to you is, as you read the information, as you hear information, recognize you get to choose how you use this information. You get to choose how you assimilate it into your life. And of course, there's stuff that you hear and you might start working on it. You might start working on it and it has no, you realize it has no relevance. It's not a wrong choice. It's just shown you something amazing about yourself. You've been able to define something that you want and something that you don't want. So that being said, guys, God doesn't test us. There is no test. There's only choice. God is always there for us. On that note, thanks for listening in. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time, you can find me right here at the Laws of Attraction in Action, the Facebook group and the Laws of Attraction in Action.com. Until next time, peace. Thanks, Phil. Peace. Bye.